Oh, that's oh, man, another, dude, we're supposed, outcasts. You're supposed to play with your fingers, oh, man. Oh, my God, I hear that all the time on YouTube. Well, well, yeah, you're playing with a pick. Well, what does that mean? So, you know, Paul McCartney. Well, let's talk about something for a minute. So, now. Sting. Some bass player guys are like, oh, yeah, man, I play with, the, I play with my fingers, man. You know, you, you, you play the pick, you pussy. <laughs> yeah, for some reason, that, like, that makes no, us outcasts. I think it's off. hilarious. You know, that's why, you know, it's like Paul McCartney played the pick. Right. You know, Nobody called a, him a bum. No, you know, he's the most successful. He's bass, got a few bucks. Most successful bass player of all time. He, yeah. Singer, songwriter. So it's like, you know, even John Deacon was great because he could play with both. Right. You play the pick or you play with his fingers. I could never develop the finger thing. Me either. I just, and I didn't have the time to, no. to do it. And you know what? It, when I started, that's all they did. These guys played with their yeah. fingers, right? And it looked so fucking cool, yeah. right? And I'm like, that's just so fucking amazing. And a lot of them were in trios. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Cream and, you know, Black Sabbath. But when you started to get into other stuff, I mean, what's one of the biggest rock bands... In history, ACDC. Cliff right. Williams plays with a pick. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, it's funny, you know, when I, you, you get into that whole thing, but I, I've never really played with my fingers. Mine was, mine was necessity. You know, I took a guitar lesson. It was my first guitar lesson. Right, right. And I met a guy who was sitting there in the corner. He had sunglasses on. Mm -hmm. And I go, are you in a band? And he goes, didn't talk. We got to interview him one of these days. He still lives in town. And I said, oh, wow. He goes, we need a bass player. I go, I play bass. He goes, got a bass guitar? I said, I'm getting it tomorrow. It was a Friday. I'm getting it tomorrow. He goes, you got a bass amp? I said, I'm getting that tomorrow. He goes, no, I'm not kidding. It was my first guitar lesson. All right. And he goes, maybe we'll try you out. We're playing the bowling alley. I go, fucking bowling alley? I said, oh, my God. You know, that was like big deal around here. Right. And long story short, I ran home. After the guitar lesson, I screamed and cried to my parents. I'm in a band. I need a bass guitar. They said, well, you just bought the guitar last week. I said, no, 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 no guitar. I got to play bass. I'm in a band. We're playing the bowling alley. And my father said, piano didn't work out. Trumpet didn't work out. Now, clearly, guitar didn't work out. This is it. You stick with this or don't play an instrument. Like, the bass, yes, bass, bass. They bought the bass. I auditioned for the band. I was 11 years old. So you hadn't this, ever touched the no, bass? No, This guy was- You just bullshit I, your I way swear on my life, yes. And <laughs> I, I, had, I, I had to play in a band so bad. I saw the Beatles on Ed Sullivan a right. week before that. I had to be in a band. Right. And I was 11 going on 12. These guys were 15, 16, and one guy was 17 or 18 mm -hmm. they accepted me in the band because they needed somebody to play we didn't play at the bowling alley it didn't work out his sister was the bartender i think she got fired or something but they accepted me in the band and we entered a battle of the bands and i'll never forget it it's like we started playing and we were so horrible it was just it was embarrassing right but <clears throat> our big song that we were going to play was gloria you remember it? By the shadows of night. Okay. We're playing, you know, and I'm trying to be cool. And this guy jumps on stage who looked like Fonzie, mm -hmm. slick back hair, tall, thin guy, motorcycle jacket. And he walks up to the sax player, who's a big, tall guy, grabs him by the throat and goes, I'm singing. Got a problem with it? <laughs> and, and he goes, no. And he looked around at the band and more. I'm like, no problem with me. He started singing Gloria. He wasn't really a great singer, but at the end, he did this Indian rain dance around the stage and started hooting and hollering this whole thing. We came in second. <laughs> at the end of the night when they announced we won, then he announced to us all in the band, he was the new singer. And if anybody had a problem, let's go outside so he could get them an ambulance to go to the hospital when he got done with them. We're like, no, no, no. And he put me on the highway to hell, smoking cigarettes, drinking whiskey, this, that, girls. The and whole how long thing. was he in the band? About a year, year and a half. And it was so funny because, you know, my father would have to pick him up for band practice. He didn't drive, right? So he'd get in the car and my father was like, I arrested you a couple of times. And he goes, yes, you did, Mr. DeMaio. But, you know, that was back then. You know, I'm enjoying being in a band. Would you like a cigarette, Mr. DeMaio? And my father goes, oh, yeah. Then my father was easy going, right? So he goes, you want a cigarette? I said, I don't smoke. He goes, don't lie to your father. You've been smoking right along. My father goes, that's right. Don't bullshit me. And he goes, if you're going to smoke, you can smoke in front of me. It's just like stuff like that. The guy had balls, you know. Mm. So it was just one of those things. But the, the moral to the story is 
I had to play with a pick. Right. You know, you just don't grab a guitar. I mean, I could play a little bit, you know what I mean? Right, but right. I couldn't play with my fingers. No. I had to play with a pick. Yeah. And from then, I just felt natural. I tried playing with my fingers, but it just, it wasn't my thing. Yeah. You know? Mine either. No. Yeah. So let's let's hear what you're going to be doing, where you're going to be, so people can actually come and hear how well, great the band is. Well, we're going to be is. all over America. We do about 60 shows a year. Very cool. Yeah. In, in March, we do Texas. I think we have another Vegas residency. Yeah, when will that be? That's in April, and this will be our third one. Wow. We did two last year. And, and, and very successful. Yeah. Sold out. Yeah, and, and we're going to do another one this year. How many nights will it be, do you think? Five. Yeah, and, and the cool thing about the Vegas stuff is that we play essentially a different set every night. Oh, nice. I mean, the, the, course, the core hits are always there, right? You'll get Love Song and Signs and mm -hmm. Cowboy and Susie and, you know, What You Give, what, what are the, the, the staples. And then we play other songs mm -hmm. because we have five nights. And we'll keep doing it until Jeff can't sing anymore. But you've had, and, you've but, got and, your and when I say that too, it's not a level of like, like when he looks at us and goes, I can't do this to the level we do it at now. That's when it's over. I'm not going to be one of those no. bands that people say, I saw them and they sound like shit. The singer can't sing anymore. And there's a lot of those guys out there still doing that. Let's, let's talk about we one won't. thing. And we, and, and we don't roll tracks or anything. We play 100%. That's what I wanted to talk about. 100% live. And, we, you know, we're very proud of that. I'm not knocking anybody that rolls tracks. Because if I was playing in Soul Motor, I'd probably roll tracks. You know what I mean? That's a different thing. But Tesla's a true American, straight up rock and roll keep it real band well you don't need to supplement the tracks and this is a very very good con conversation I, I didn't plan to get into it but i i do want to address you never it. know where we're gonna go i it? know and but i do want to address and i'm not it. in a hurry by the way well i thank you for bringing it up because okay. i'm no spokesman for anybody or for anything okay my opinion is my opinion for whatever it's worth to anybody you're welcome to it if you can learn something from it or if you can gain something from it great if not ignore me and that's the whole purpose of this. This is to have fun and for everybody to just share what they think, what they feel. You know, I know that Motley Crue and Kiss and a lot of people have have gotten a lot of shit about backing tracks. And I don't know what they're doing or what they're not doing. I only mm -hmm. read some things every now and then. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you, in Man of War, we do use backing tracks. But what those backing tracks are, are simply the instruments that we couldn't possibly bring to the show. For instance... A hundred voice male choir. Yeah, you no. can't bring that. A uh, hundred twenty piece full orchestra. You certainly couldn't bring that. You know what I mean? So I don't see where there is any sin in doing that. Only because we recorded a record with a huge orchestra and a huge choir. Mm -hmm. People are expecting to hear that, and mm -hmm. that is the only honest way that we could really do that. But, mm. you know, is Mike playing all the guitar? Yes, he is. You know, is mm. Dave playing all the drums? And, you know, am I playing all I, the bass? And think, is Eric singing all the parts? I, I don't yes. think any of that's a problem. I think what people are bitching about is the people that are that are doing it that are lying about it or are, aren't. It's like, yeah, you know, like I said, if you came to Cinzo Motor, I'd be running tracks. You'll see, my, yeah, we have tracks with us, right? And I'm not slagging it or, or, or saying, I'm just saying Tesla doesn't do it. All right, you well, know, you I don't have a need to do we it. We don't have a need to do it. So there have been times when we've been in the studio and I would say, hey, let's have a string section in this song. And Jeff would say, no, how are we going to do it live? Fair enough. But one of the guys could play keyboards if you really determined that you had you to have the strings. Because you have two guitar players and me playing the bass. That's true. So you say, okay, but... You know, it's like ACDC ain't going to do a, a record with strings. So I get it. It's like, that's that brand. That's that, that thing. Mm -hmm. It's cool. Okay. We, we won't do strings or we won't have horn, a horn section. Otherwise, we'd have to bring a horn section out with us, right? Because Jeff is, you know, he's just one of those guys. He's like, you know, he's like, Tessa's not, there's no bullshit, right? That's the one thing. For better or for worse, right? Just like... You know, in the day when we did all these records and we sold all these records and we weren't on any covers of any magazine because we weren't an image band, right? We didn't have a Steven Tyler or an Axl Rose or Sebastian Bach. You know, we were just these guys that everyone knew our songs, but really didn't know what we looked like. Like we weren't, you know, of the time. We were kind of against the thing, even though today they lump us into that. Oh, you're a hair band from the 80s. 
No. I, and the way really. they say it, and I have nothing against whatever they're calling hair bands from the 80s, but it's the condescending way they say it to right. us. It's like, no, we were different. We were, we, were, we were different. You know, we weren't on a MTV a bunch. We weren't on Circus Magazine. We weren't on Hit Parade or, you know, the covers. Join we, the club. Right. So it's <laughs> like, don't say that we're that. We're, we're different. We, we were more like a 70s rock band, like you know dr hook or or somebody you know that you didn't really know but you knew what the songs were yeah and, but the public i think the public has a, a lot of misinformation about this whole backing track issue well, and i think it's important because i think people think when they hear it they think the band is not playing a lick and they're standing up there miming like a lot of pop well, music some people does. are and that's the problem and some people get busted doing that and I guess where I'm going with this is Tesla won't be one of those bands where Jeff Keith's not singing. Somebody who just, you know, counted numbers and looked at it as a bank. Well, we could just run tape and, you know, he'll just pantomime. Well, we wouldn't do that. We have we we have too much integrity. We would not do that. It's one thing running some orchestras or a choir. But when your lead singer is on tape, then you are pantomiming. And we're not even talking about rock, but there are pop artists, huge, huge, huge pop artists. And that's they're just up there. The, the dance moves are more important. Well, that's than right. the singing. It would be impossible to do that dancing and singing right. at the same time. So when time, you I look mean, at those artists who were female that were doing all these dance moves, but obviously they clearly weren't singing. You're buying entertainment, right? You want to be entertained. Yep. So it's not really, it's a different thing. It's like going and seeing a play or going, you know, like Kiss doing this, this thing with these avatars, which, you know, I, I think they got it from the ABBA thing. Mm -hmm. Fair on them. Good game. As long as you know when you're going to see that, it's going to be avatars. Right. So you're going to, to be entertained. Look, I've seen Cirque du Soleil, the Beatles love eight times. I loved it every time. There's, the Beatles aren't playing. Right. But it's their music, but there's this whole show and entertainment, and I, I would pay more than to see it. You know what I mean? So it's how you view it. I think what it is, the bottom line, is when you bullshit people into some thinking that it's something that it's not. To wrap this up, people get on social media, and everyone's a critic and a... And a expert. And a expert, and they say all this shit, and then people read this shit on Facebook... And I mean, a perfect example is like my situation with Tommy Skeo, who was the original guitar player in Tesla with Frank, who has been out of the band for, I don't know, 16 years. Everyone had this idea of what me and him's relationship was like because they read some bullshit on Facebook from, you know, Blabbermouth or Sleaze Rockers or something, some website that just, you know. But me and him knew the truth. So, it, well, that's the problem that that whole misinformation thing. It, I mean, there's so much misinformation. It's insane. And I mean, in our it world, up. it's not just music. It's like fake news. It's fake news. I know. But where are we getting it from? Facebook. So Facebook is your news source. People with too much time on their fucking hands. Right. It's like you know when I read some of these negative comments and. You know, I try to be fair to everybody, you know what I mean? Right, Unless somebody's right. really being an asshole, you know, I, let them talk. It doesn't make any difference because I, I think it, it's free speech in this country and people should yeah, express themselves. But you should be able to, I, you should be able to answer those yeah, comments Yeah, I think too. it's cool, but you know, there are facts and there are no facts, right? Yeah, I yeah. still hear people talk about this. There was a fight between you and Twisted Sister and... It was like, there was never any fight between us and Twisted Sister. Oh, yeah. I did an interview with a journalist. He brought up Twisted Sister. And I knew a lot about these guys. And mm. I knew they worked with Eddie Kramer. So I had nothing but respect for these guys. So I did an interview with this guy for Sounds Magazine in England. Oh, yeah, I know. And he seen. liked, yeah, and he liked Manowar, this guy, right? Twisted Sister's name came up. And he took it upon himself to embellish that I made a crack about them playing clubs. Anything I ever said about those guys was complimentary, right? Mm -hmm. But he turned around and made it look the opposite. The, oh, yeah. You know the interview with the Pope, he lands in New York. The journalist runs up and goes, Holy Father, are you here to do anything about the whorehouses in New York City? And the Pope says, 
are there any whorehouses in New York City? And in the paper, Pope asks, are there any whorehouses in New York City? Right, right. So, you know, there was a spin on what I said, right? Now, this was at a time we had no record deal. And the press, you know, of course, they love that, right? Mm -hmm. They wanted to develop this big rivalry right, in a war. Right. Every week, there was a new thing on the battle between Man of War and Twisted Sister. And thank God that happened. I shut my mouth and didn't say a word. And we were always in the press, and that mm -hmm. led us to getting another record deal because right, of it. Right. So now fast forward all these years later, we finally ran into each other at a festival in Spain, you know, mm -hmm. and Dee Snyder with his band. I saw him get out of the car, and I walked up, and I introduced myself, and I said, I want to welcome you, you know, to, to the festival. If there's anything we can do, I want to help you out. And he goes, oh, that's great. He goes, yeah, I hear you guys really tear it up over here. It was really nice, class guy, mm -hmm. right? I said, just so you know, I said... I really never said anything about you. I talked to that journalist and I said, why did you do that? And he said, I wanted to do you a favor. You needed a record deal and I wanted to keep your name in the press. And I said, oh, that was a great way to do it. And he just laughed at it, you know? Yeah. And people today still believe that there was this this big battle and it's oh, yeah. just, it's crazy. Yeah. You know, with this old member of the band, I've never said a bad word about any guy that was ever in Man of War, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think it's like, if you're part of the family, you're part of the family forever. I'm not going to speak bad about yeah, one of these no, people. It, why would I do that? It, it's, it's just people just get information you know, they, they read something on Facebook, they, they have preconceived notions, whatever. When we were kids, we had magazines, right? We didn't have social yeah. Oh, media. yeah, for sure. As much as social media is, is cool, I think it's not cool. Well, it's a two-edged sword, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I'm not a big social media fan. I, I still subscribe to, you got to make a great song. No, we got to get our followers up. You know, we got we got to have more likes on Facebook. It's like, well, that doesn't translate to them buying a concert ticket or a T-shirt or becoming a fan of your band, right? That's just smoke and mirrors. It's bullshit. So you have all these musicians now that think they're Facebook stars. I'm the kind of guy, though, when someone says some shit to me on Facebook, or, I'll, I'll say, fuck you. But I think they want that reaction. <laughs> yeah, though. I know. And I, I've got to, like not do it that to make is the point and i agree with it and because you know, people can push your button but i'm in the same situation i tell people don't fucking talk about the band don't blame mike for anything don't blame dave for anything don't blame eric for anything you know it's got nothing to do with these guys you want to say something about fucking man of war don't say it about man of war because those guys are man of war say it about me you know you could say whatever you want about me but there's no reason to to start slagging these guys or have a negativity about them well, or our crew or any of the the wonderful people that are part of this organization that breaks their ass all over the world just for the love of the fans. I well, mean, you know, just, let's face it. It's, it's a lot it's of just a reality, people, you know, and you either do it for love or you don't. And it goes with the territory. You, you, you have to wake up every day, and this is important for people getting started. Know that no matter what you do, it will never be good enough. No good deed goes unpunished like we haven't played the states for 10 years right mm -hmm. we decided okay our schedule will, will allow us mm -hmm. to play one show in new york finally a lot of people are thrilled the show sold out super quick right I which know. was a compliment it's amazing but then there's all these people saying why don't you come to florida come to dallas come here and there would we not love to but is it easier for them to fly from Dallas to New York? I mean, people were saying, oh, I can't fly to Europe. I understand. Okay, so you put that together from the West Coast to go to Europe. You're talking about a 15-hour flight, whatever, 10-hour right, right, flight. Right, right. And you ask them just to travel a little bit. If it is your favorite band, it shouldn't be much of an imposition. Everybody's got an iPhone. What do they cost a grand for the top of the line phone? So I think people find the money to do what's in their heart and it's important to them. Right. And you can't ever please, you know, everybody. No, no matter I mean, what you, you have do. to stay true to yourself. That's first and foremost. Yeah. What advice would you give I would these say, guys and gals and people, whoever you are and whatever you yourself. are, and whatever you do, what do you think if you were starting today and you were them, what do you, what can you tell them? Cause you're a success. I'd say if you want to be a songwriter and a musician and an artist, do it for yourself. Do the best work you can do. And anything on top of that is gravy. We never made a record going, if we do this, this will be successful. No, this is what we do. This is what we like. And then the record company liked it, right? Hopefully the people will like it. But we always stayed true to who we were. We weren't chasing some trend or something else. Don't chase a, a trend. I mean, if if you, you know, you're a kid and you, you love Freddie Mercury and and you want to sing like Freddie Mercury and play piano and, and that's your, then go with that. And don't worry about what people say about you. 
right? Because if, if you're doing stuff to please other people, it's never going to be real and honest. And that's not even for music. That's in life. But there's two choices, right? I mean, people entering this business or that wish to enter this business are, are faced with a decision because what we do, it's, it's not a job. It's a life. In other words, a fish, you take them out of the water, he's going to die. And yes. you have to make that decision personally. If you do not play or sing or whatever your heart's telling you to do, will you die? And would you rather be dead? That's decision one. Or is it the other side of it where it's television, lights, planes, makeup, clothes, the whole thing? Is it the allure of stardom? Do you want to be a star or do you want to be a musician? Because a musician is happy to play Just his music, play music, you know, little right. two room apartment, whatever, if you're lucky enough to have that, or maybe less than that. I tell people, do you want to be a star or do you want to be a musician? You know, as you were talking about a Freddie Mercury or somebody. Right. So who, I, I he guess, devoted his life to playing and learning right, how to play right. and write and do that. Right. And I, I guess the point is, is if you want to be a musician, be a musician first. And if success comes along with it. That's the cherry on the side. That's the gravy. Right. Right. I wanted to, to, to play bass and make a record. Have my record in the shop one day. They didn't stay in the shop long, though. People bought them. Well, yeah, but they're still in the shops. You know, they could still buy them. Yeah, they could still buy them. But, you know, you mean everything on top of that was gravy. I think so. So I the think first the thing way. was just be true to yourself. It's like, okay, well, all right, this is, we wrote this song. This is who we are. Hopefully you dig it. If you don't, we're sorry. There's nothing we can do. Yeah. So that's the intangible thing about it. Well, there's no guarantee. That's, that's no the thing guarantee. you've got to face. There are some people out there that think they can just buy it. They can buy success and stuff, and, and you can. What you can buy, and this is this is another good point. You, you can, can buy can someone buy, to help guide you. You can buy equipment. You could buy stage clothes. Right. You can buy art designers. You could buy art. You could buy backdrops. You could buy all the trappings. Mm -hmm. And then you can go pay somebody. If you have enough money, you can pay to get on the stage in front of a big band. But the one thing you can't do is make that audience love what you are and what you do mm. and respond to it. There's no way no. to do that. There's no guarantee no. that the audience That's is going to like your stuff. That's the intangible thing. It's like you can make a great record. You can do all that. You can pay for the positioning in the record store. You can pay, you know, you used to be able to pay to get it on the radio and all that stuff. You can do all that stuff, but if the people don't like it and deem They're it not great, buy it. and that's the one thing about if you're a musician, hone your craft. You know? And have you played in front of audiences where you're the support band and, and this is what you see? And Once. then maybe at the end, <laughs> you actually reached them? Did you have that experience? Yeah, yeah. At one time in Madison, Wisconsin, opening up for Def Leppard, they were all there like this. And those are usually the musicians, though. And, 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 and you know, it was, it was like, really, really. But by the end of the night, we got them. But, right. you know, yeah. And I've played to people where they're just sitting there going like this the whole time. In front See, of you. you're lucky. You were able to play shows with other bands. We only played a couple times with other bands. The people were not interested to have us play for some reason. Really? Yes. So yes. Uh, yeah, you played all on your own the whole time? Wow. Pretty much. We, we, we did five you. shows with Ted Nugent, or no, three out of five. Uh, we played, I think, six with Motorhead. Uh, and I think we did one show with another big German band. Everything else was all on Everything your own. Everything else well, was brought to life by the power of the fans. They did it all. I can't, I can't say of, we did it. of you and your band. And I mean, that you The fans did, did it though. I mean, it, was, right. it wasn't anything else. It was the fans decided well, they right. liked us. They thank, liked thank you, right, God, exactly. You know? and, and what makes... I don't know what makes people no, if, like Like us. John Lennon said, if we all knew what hit songs were, that's all we'd write. Right. You, if right, we all knew right. what makes people, you know, want to support a group, we, of course. Well, we, right. There's, we, there's no magic we wand. We do it. But you did it. You did. You stayed true to what it was you believed in, just as we did. And people happen to like it. And that's why we're sitting here talking today. That's 40 right. do you, I don't know how many fucking, I'm going on 40 something years. Well, I'll, be, few, I'll be 23 next week. Anyway, I hope we're going to be uh, alive a lot longer and, and we yeah, can pick up too. on uh, the Brian Wheat story part two, because we haven't even scratched the surface of the kind of guy that you are. You're an author. I mean, I, I, I can I talk do about a lot of forever. things. I, 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 you know, I was talking to, I have a partner that Dean Robson, who is, um, he helps manage tests with me, all my other things. And he's like a son to me. And he, 
He's like, what are you doing? I said, well, you know me. I, 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 I'm always busy. He goes, you, 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 if you didn't have something to do, you'd go nuts. This it's hard is your for passion, me to, man. It's hard in your for blood. me to sit still. I mean, that's why I'm rocking all the time. I'm Look, thinking, you're a rocker. You got to you know, rock. No, I'm not really a rocker. Yeah, I, but Tesla is rock music. Yeah, but Tesla's just one thing. What? But what I'm saying I'm a is- pop guy. Well, you, you, like, you like the catchiness of hooks. You like yeah. hooks. You like the style of music. But the stuff I you're like producing any, There's only two really kinds of music. Good and bad. Good and bad. That's right. That's well, you make good music. You have for your I, whole I life. Some bad music You're going to continue to do it. I'm and try. I'm just so thankful to have had this guy here today. But, but it wait, wasn't enough go, time. You got to do it again. I want to come and see you play in New York. I am coming. All right. With my, I'm bringing my agent, my wife. Okay, fantastic. I got earplugs for him. Don't worry. Oh, he's all right. He's Metallica's agent. Oh, well, then he's got his own earplugs. He's got his I'm own sure. set of in-ears, probably. Cool. All right, Joey DeMaio and the great Brian Wheat signing off. 